What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Elevate Dominate Mastermind. Today, we have Tony Angelos in, uh, my partner, Dan Spitz, as well. Um, both of them are, well, Dan's originally from Chicago, which is how this whole thing's coming about. And Tony is our newest agent that came on board um, with our downline there in Chicago, recently made the switch over to EXP Realty, and has already had a ton of success as a realtor in such a short amount of time. So we wanted to have him come on here to kind of talk about you know, what was it that got you into the business? What were you doing prior to that? What do you think is like kind of created that accelerant where some agents sell two homes their first year and yet you're just nonstop? <laughs> That's a great question, Brett. Well, uh, to give you some background, I think I, like a lot of people that I talked to, got into the business because I bought my first place about two and a half years ago. I didn't know any better. I had a realtor, she was with Compass. I just got matched up with her on Zillow. And as you know, we closed the transaction, we moved on. My girlfriend and I kind of reflected on it and we just thought she could have done a lot better. Um, and I know a lot of realtors, family, friends. I know quite a few of them that get by by doing pretty much the bare minimum. It's kind of the standard, it's very low bar and several people just meet that bar. Yep. And that's just how they live. Fast forward, I got into Bigger Pockets. Uh, if you're familiar with it, I got real into the Bigger Pockets podcast, their forums, uh, started connecting with a lot of people on that site and just in the Chicago investor community. And, and just ahead. to pause right there, just so anybody who's listening that doesn't know what Bigger Pockets is, if you don't mind just kind of like breaking down what what they're up to and all that stuff too, like what drove you to the Bigger Pockets side of things. That's a great question. I really do not know what drove me to Bigger Pockets. And for those that don't know, Bigger Pockets is kind of like a uh, like a Reddit for real estate. It's a forum based website, and uh, you know, posts that get the most traction get pushed to the top. And it's really like a one stop shop for people interested in building wealth through real estate. Um, runs the gamut of you know short-term rentals, long-term rentals, property management, et cetera, et cetera. And um, I got real dialed in on the Chicago market and you know who, who are the players there? Who should I be meeting? Because at the time I was working in finance, I was working in uh, ops for an asset management company. Okay. And I just like wanted more out of life. I just felt like there was more to be had. Um, I had this big dream when I was a kid that I was gonna be like a hedge fund manager and like this big, you know, guy walking on Wall Street. And that was just not the reality. I, I felt like I got duped. I was like, this isn't this isn't what finance was made out to be in college. Um, so I got into real estate and I got, you know, pretty into, I got pretty familiar with who was who in the Chicago market. And one guy wrote a post his name's Tom Shellcross. And um, he kind of became a mentor to me. I reached out to him. He kind of had a similar background to me. And I just, you know, reached out to him one day out of the blue and said, hey, Tom, I like what you're doing. Can I pick your brain? From there, we kind of became friends. And he went on to pitch me the idea of a podcast that he wanted to start called Straight Up Chicago Investor Podcast. And he hosted it with another guy named Mark Ainley. Mark's one of the premier property managers in Chicago. And uh, the two of them started hosting the podcast and I was doing volunteer work for them, just, you know, back on stuff, making sure the podcast was, you know, alive and running. And um, the three of us kind of started it and they just had their, I think, 110th episode or something like that. Um, so it, it gained a lot of traction very quickly. Uh, but it was the two of them, actually, that kind of pitched me the idea of being a broker. They were like, hey, man, you're pretty good at this. Like, you know what you're talking about. You're familiar with everything. Like, why don't you make a career out of it? At the time, COVID was, you know, just just uh, making landfall here in the States. And I kind of thought, you know, what the hell? I was in Cancun when I studied for my license exam. I did a ton of practice tests on a balcony while I smoked a cigar, came back, and I took the test. Nice. And um, I got hooked up. This, this is about a year and almost a half ago. And I got hooked up with a broker um, who basically lived right down the street from me. Didn't really shop around, didn't really, you know, interview other brokers. He was referred to me from a friend um, and he was a top producing broker in Chicago. Like I thought I could, you know, learn a lot from him. And I did learn a lot from him. I had a lot of success my first year. Uh, first year I had, 
closed and pending closed just north of 5 million with 13 transactions. So it was a really good first year. Um, but then for, you know, one, one reason or another, Danny reached out to me right at the perfect time when I was thinking about making a move and yeah. people had pitched me on EXP before, but for whatever reason, I was like, I'm going to talk to this guy. So, you know, we talked, I learned about his upline, which is you, we all talked and I just thought to myself, like, these are the people that I want to align myself with. These are the people that have the results that I want to get for myself. And just about two weeks ago, I made the move over to EXP and here we are. Yeah. I feel like when, when you have, you know, somebody like Danny, for instance, let, let's use a, him as an example. Like he cold called literally everybody in the world. <laughs> and then he did like 28 million a year at 26 years old. And same thing, like he, when he went and took his real estate test, he did it online, um, you know, from college. Like he wasn't even back uh, in, in New Jersey or New York at the time. But like when they're, when they're actually walking the walk aspect of it, it, it gets attention. Like it's not like this guy's just calling you with this quick, you know, easy fix to like solve every problem. And I feel like that's the issue that we have a lot of times with EXP where, Whereas, you know, we're actually boots on the ground, nitty gritty, doing what we're talking about doing. And that's that's why I feel like we have value and and you too, like what's fun about you being a part of our world now, you can share that same value with people who want to come into your world at EXP because you've already had way more success in a short amount of time than a lot of the realtors that we talk to, which is really cool. It was done yesterday. <laughs> yeah. I think uh, I think we brought another person on yesterday. But okay. it's all part of telling a story. I, I'm a big believer in the power of stories. Uh, when, Because like I think of myself as a salesman. I know there are a lot of realtors who don't consider themselves salesmen. I think that's ridiculous. We literally are selling homes. It is in the description of what we do. Um, but with sales, the story, the narrative that you're that you're projecting is so important. And it's what captivates people. So just telling my story, I think. It, now I'm talking in terms of like, bringing more people to the exp community telling my story about you know what was important for me the things that i was going through these are these are experiences that are relatable for a lot of a lot of people a lot of new agents a lot of existing agents too they might not know what's out there they might not know who else they could be talking to they might not even know what kind of results they want right but when you can figure out what kind of results you want and you can find somebody who has the results that i want like i told danny what my number was my first year and i told him what i wanted to make this year and he was like, dude, that's what I did. And I was like, great. I'm going to align myself to you because you have literally done what I said I want to do. So it makes it very easy for me to just follow in your footsteps because the blueprints, the blueprints already been made. Right. A hundred percent. Yeah. And I feel like that's one of the issues too. Like I see a lot of times now that we're at the beginning of the year, I'm having conversations with agents that are that are at their current brokerage and they're talking about, oh, 2021 wasn't necessarily as good as 2020. I'm like, okay, cool. Well, what is your broker doing to make sure that that never happens to you again? What do you, what is like the crystal clear plan to make sure that 2022 is the best year of your real estate career? And it's interesting how many agents don't have the answer to that question and yet they still stay where they're at because it's comfortable, you know? Um, so, it, it, you know, it's a lot of fun to have somebody like yourself too, who, who, who's, coming on board and you're just like, I have no doubt that you're going to sell a hundred homes per year in five, six, seven years, whatever it may be, because you're just going to follow the plan and just keep going, 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 going until you get there. Right. Right. And to your point though, about, you know, making, making it be a difficult decision, whether or not to leave. Like I had that experience, like my previous managing broker, we shared the same birthday. We both had a love of cigars and scotch. Like we got along really well. So I felt like I was uh, almost like an employee of his. Like I felt like part of the family and I didn't realize at the time, but I had this idea that the brokerage that you're a part of really matters in the eyes of the consumer. And that could not be further from the truth. They do not care what brokerage you're with. They do not care if you're with Compass, EXP, Keller Williams, Sotheby's it makes no difference when they're talking to you one on one, because they really care about the person that they're communicating with, how much they like, know and trust that person. And the brokerage is irrelevant. So I had I had this idea in my mind, like, oh, I work for a, a really cool boutique brokerage and we're all part of a family and this is going to help me get business. But it never once did and it never, never will. 
Right. So once I kind of had that realization that, wait, that doesn't matter. I need to be at a brokerage that is going to give me the tools to put myself in the most successful position possible. Give me the tools to leverage my business and scale and grow and build more long-term wealth and income. Cause that's ultimately what we're doing here. We're trying to, you know, create, create a fortune for ourselves, wealth for our families. Once I, once I wrap my head around that, it was a very easy decision to come over. It was a no brainer. Yeah. And I feel like too, to go back to your, your initial, you know, opener, there's so many mediocre agents too, that are operating at that big brand that aren't, they're, they're just relying on the brand to sell the home, to, to be a salesperson. And there's so much strategy that goes in behind that, like that we can really dive into. And that's the reason why there's some agents that sell 500, a thousand homes per year. And there's some agents that sell too. Um, there's a lot of agents at those at, at certain brands that literally are, are doing one, two, three homes, uh, home sales per year. And yet people still decide that that's like the consumer still decides that's where I want to be, where the reality is somebody like yourself that probably geeks out on the actual process to give the consumer the best experience possible actually will give a better experience and give better results as a result of what they're doing. No, couldn't agree more. Couldn't agree more. Cool. No, definitely. So, um, dude, we're, we're, we're super excited to have you on board. Um, we're building quite a bit out in Chicago at this time. We're, uh, you know, Danny's going back. Danny, when do you go back? Uh, about a month and a half. Time's taken. Yeah. So Danny will be back there. Then we're going to start, uh, you know, I flew out there in November. We met with a lot of agents um, and we're just trying to create a, a very large EXP presence um, because I know there's a lot of opportunity uh, in that area for the realtors, for the consumers to have like an experience, what this is all about. So if somebody wanted to, you know, get in touch with you and, you know, hop on a zoom with me, hop on a zoom with Danny and kind of figure out how we can map out 2022 to make it the best experience for them and give it the best, like make it the best year of their lives. Um, what's a good way to get in touch with you? I would say probably either reaching out directly to me on my, is there like a chat here? Can I put my phone number in a chat or something? I'm going to tag you in on Facebook at afterwards, and then you could just comment down on it. But yeah, sure. Um, but I would say aside from that, connecting with me on Instagram, I'm really active on Instagram. My Instagram handle is just Tony Angelos as it's displayed right there. Um, I go live every single week talking about different things, real estate. I try and help as many agents as I can. I have a YouTube channel that I started too, um, because for me, like coming from a finance operations background, for me, I really like the systems. And you talked about like geeking out on like the actual process. Yeah, I mean, that's where all the friction is. That's where all the areas of improvement could be. And that's how you can deliver a great experience for a, for a client. And that's how you get repeat business. That's how you build raving fans. So having a good system in place is so paramount. And I think that I am in, in the process at least of developing my own systems that I think are really effective. And I tweak them every trans a transaction. But like, those are the types of things that I'm trying to kind of convey to the people that follow me on Instagram, follow me on YouTube and just kind of share my experience. Um, just so ultimately everyone else can be more successful. There's enough pie for everybody. Like it's a huge market. Definitely. Definitely. So I would say go, go follow Tony on, uh, on Instagram. He thinks differently. Um, and he thinks similar to like the way that we're doing it too. And like the game can be played better. So, uh, so tune in, reach out to them and let's rock and roll, man. Appreciate you having, have, or being a part of our family. Absolutely. Um, I'm glad to be here. Yeah. Keep it cranking, buddy. And we'll, uh, we'll do another one of these in about a year from now. We'll be looking back. It'll be good things. Ahead. <laughs> okay. Sounds good to me. Awesome. Later guys.